whole world government agenda. And as Lord Moncton has pointed out, it distracts us from real environmental issues like overfishing, toxic waste dumping. None of us want to hurt the earth. No, it distracts us with pay your pittance, pay your indulgences to get out of purgatory to Al Gore, who you know owns part of the carbon exchange. Mark Moreno here. I feel like I should have champagne right now, like I did on air a few years ago when the climate stuff came out. Day one, I popped champagne. We ran the media blockade. We got it out. Do you agree with me that uh, this is the emperor down the mine shaft, or is this just Darth Vader grabbing the emperor, preparing to throw him down? A lot of Star Wars analogies. Yeah, I mean, this this is uh, equivalent to, yeah, them blowing up the Death Star. This is it. I heard the equivalent of Jim Jones bailing out of the People's Temple cult before he drank the Kool-Aid, before they drank the Kool-Aid. He's trying to save the other cultists. James Lovelock today, and making this announcement, and this is broken, this is amazing. One of the key founders of Climate Alarm, James Lovelock, the inventor of the Gaia Earth Theory, that the Earth is a living, breathing organism, which has spawned so many Earth worshippers since then, has come out and announced that he was wrong about global warming. He was alarmist about global warming. He now admits that he didn't know, the, understand the climate. They thought they knew it 20 years ago. This is huge. And the fact that MSNBC is breaking the news. Now, Climate Depot, we've been following this guy for years. We actually go back to 2010 and show the beginnings of his growing skepticism. He started praising skeptics. He started backing away then. But now his new book's coming out, and apparently in James Lovelock's new book, he completely walks away. This guy made Al Gore look moderate. That's how serious he was. In fact, James Lovelock, as, early, as recently as 2007, had said that global warming would doom us all and, quote, billions of us will die. There'll be a few breeding pairs of people that will survive in the Arctic, unquote. That's how alarmist this guy was. He is now bailing on the movement. He's making a mockery of it. He's, he's saying that he's admitting he's wrong, and he's saying how so few scientists are willing to do it. So in a way, we should really be praising this guy for having the courage to admit his failure. Why are they beginning to bail the sinking ship? I mean, why are they beginning to climb out of it? A couple different reasons. One of the UN top scientists a few years ago now warned of coming global cooling on the Earth. Uh, and he's as of the possibility of global cooling. And this was a man who said that the oceans weren't showing the warming. Uh, and this went on, and this caused such a stir is at a UN meeting in Europe that this happened. And this may be one of the little peeks into what's going on here. They're fearful that the sun is going to take a downturn, that ocean cycles are going to shift, and that we may be going through several decades. There have been several peer-reviewed studies predicting this. And they're trying to bail out now before they have egg all over their face as global temperatures fail to warm. And what they're already doing, we've already caught what people are openly calling fraud at NASA with James Hansen and fraud at the, um, at the University of East Anglia that keeps the temperature data for the United Nations. They're now retroactively changing past temperatures uh, to make recent years warmer than the past. Again, this would be like a, a Wall Street firm changing their books from 10 years ago uh, to lower their profits to show that profits are going up when in fact they're declining. So they're, what they're doing is they're changing the historic record so they can say, hey, look, things are actually uh, warming now when before they showed cooling. So that could be what's happening and they can only adjust temperatures so much. They can only tinker with the data so much to, and get away with that. So now what we're seeing is people bailing. And we've seen this before. We've talked about it. a man named Dennis Rancourt in Canada, uh, a left winger who's come out and said, you know, global warming is nothing but a, uh, a, a fantasy of the, of the wealthy Western middle class. And he now says that it's taking away from real environmentalism. So many environmentalists are angry and upset that this movement fell flat. And for James Lovelock, the king of the entire movement, this is the man. This was the man who, who basically you could say the, they call him the father of the modern green movement. Game, game big in the 1960s, has such followers, and was the original alarmist on global warming. He is now bailing out, and this is huge. And again, for MSNBC to be the one reporting it, there's some irony here. The founders of the movement bail out, with the, and it's reported by the media that helped create it. But here's so the it's, problem. It's you foreshadowed this a few months ago when you were in South Africa on my show via Skype with Lord Moncton. You said, yeah. look out. I predict they're going to fully bail on this and Al Gore because yeah. you could see the signs, and jump to uh, species extinction and just power grab everywhere. I mean, if they've turned yeah. off most of the water to Oregon and, and northern and central California over a fish that isn't even indigenous, yeah. my God, I mean, here in Austin, they steal property for warblers and 
And uh, for uh, salamanders, it's all made up. Uh, so, I mean, look out. They're in the lifeboats. Where are they going in the escape pods? Yes, and I, you're an excellent point, Alex. I don't want to mislead anyone by implying that they're giving up on wacky environmentalism. Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen James Lovelock's new book, but it's ultimately it's, what's happening here is many environmental scientists are bailing on global warming. They're going to roll global warming into the larger issue of sustainable development. Coming up, Earth Summit in Rio, which I'll actually be attending with Lord Moncton. Uh, and Senator James Inhofe from Oklahoma may be attending as well. Uh, so we're going to have some fun down at this Rio conference at the UN, and because it, it's going to be a, a new festival where they're going to be introducing species extinction. They're going to be go talking about sustainable development, land use policies. And we, again, they're talking about a scope that could control every aspect of human endeavors, from agriculture to transportation to um, your, any kind of land use issue to species uh, to... Um, and let's uh, be clear. Let's be clear. Let me just interrupt. I want you to go back. Last year, as you know, they had massive fines for grass dust on a farm. If a yeah. barn was dusty, that's it. You're, you're going to be shut down. And, and Congress is having to act. I mean, this is about a total shutdown. They mean business. If you're not with the in crowd, you're going to have your business or farm shut down. I mean, these, these are vicious authoritarians. Yes, and th yeah, this is what this is what they're looking to have a international monitoring agency. One of the other stories of Climate Depot today is about the carbon sat surveillance satellite. It aims to hunt down climate violators globally in just five years' time. And we've had the German climate advisor recently come out and say that we need a CO2 budget for every man, woman, and child on the planet. And guess what? Every single American's already over the budget, so we're going to be punished. We're going to be stripped of our carbon ability to emit carbon emissions. Um, and they're coming after it. This is bean counters gone crazy. We saw this in the 20th century. You can put any face you want on it uh, from all the different tyrannical rules. But this is what we're talking about. He who controls carbon controls life. He who controls land use controls life. He who controls our environment controls life. At the same time, Alex, just last week, Gallup released another poll after uh, the la latest figures are hundreds of billions of dollars spent promoting man-made climate fears. We are looking at uh, people still put global warming at the bottom. Americans put global warming at the bottom of environmental concerns. And that's good news. And they realize that. People like James Lovelock see a movement dying. Among environmental issues, global warming dead last, according to the latest Gallup data. That is huge. All the hype. Exactly. All the, money, all the Oscars, all the Nobel Prizes. And they can't even get people to be convinced it's an important environmental problem. Well, it is a big victory. They're regrouping with new scams and new things to scare us with to, you know, so we can pay them money and worship them as our Gaia gods. But at the same time, if their entire priesthood of this new religion is discredited, and of course, we're in the background, it's an anti-human religion of eugenics, then where are their new leaders going to be? When they've already been caught crying wolf, it's going to be an ice age by 2000. And well, then by the matter. 80s, it, it, they, it's going to be melting ice caps. They do that without, they do that, on, they turn on a dime. They could care less about that. They, we had people like Steven Snyder warning of global, coming global ice age in the 70s without a problem with the late 80s. He's warning of global warming and, and record heat. They have no shame when it comes to that. The one thing they've learned, and this is someone like Paul Ehrlich, the eugenicist, the Mr. Overpopulation. He was making predictions in 1970 of 10 years away, 15 years away. The problem was he was still alive. He's still alive today, but he was still alive when he made these predictions. So what the global warming alarmists are doing, and I'm assuming what the new sustainable development Earth Summit is going to do, they're going to make predictions much further into the future when everyone who's making the predictions will be long dead. So they have a learning curve. They're getting that part. But they have no shame whether they're worried about overpopulation, deforestation, global cooling, global warming. They don't care. They turn on a dime. They, they act as though it never happened. And then they come out with studies. They'll now tell you with a straight face that they never predicted global cooling in the 70s. There's probably some who will claim the overpopulation fears were overblown, despite the fact we have the quotes. We have the quotes from the first Earth Day at Climate Depot. I posted these. They are the most absurd, laughable, asinine quotes. Yet the, yet the people making these quotes, people like Paul Ehrlich, are still winning awards today. So they have no shame when it comes to being wrong, to being alarmist. They just tr shift and go on to the next thing, and the compliant media reports it as though it's all new and shocking information. They never report their track record. 
Now, Mark, let me raise this point to you. What's going to happen to James Lovelock with those rats that are not leaving uh, yeah, the sinking ship? Uh, I want to raise this point. Last week, we wrote a story directly linking to the Forbes article that had been out for a couple days, and I guess yeah. nobody seemed to think it was a problem, to have Forbes, which does some pretty good writing sometimes, is very respected. That's what makes it even more dangerous. Climate alarmist calls for burning down skeptics' homes. He said, you know, let's find out where they live, quote, let's make them pay, and when their houses are burning, let's not put them out. Let's take their property. I mean, he's pretty much saying burn them down, and Forbes is putting this out like, it's normal. This makes the new Black Panther Party saying, let's start killing some white people sound tame. Yeah. I mean, this is so wild and so desperate. And then we added to it the cornucopia of them saying, we need green fascism. We need to arrest these people. We need well, to I lock think, them up. I mean, yeah, Lovelock himself called for suspending democracy to deal with global warming. I, that's, I think it's one of the things he'd called for in the past. I mean, these that's their first impulse. We have Tom Friedman in The New York Times praising uh, the, the Chinese uh, political system because they don't have the messiness of democracy. They can do what's right for the people. They're openly admitting they don't like democracy and the free will of the people because why? Because in their minds, the masses, the unwashed masses get in the way of their Harvard educated PhD minds that are so intelligent and know so well what is best for the people. How dare the mom of three kids living in Iowa has a voice in how they're going to manage this economy. I have two masters, a PhD. This is what the people from the New York Times and, and these other people think. It becomes a, you know, elitism that comes over. This hey, is Al Gore, money or the earth is destroyed. We're saving you, damn it. <laughs> That's right. And they really believe they are. And you keep talking about religion and the cult. The Washington Post hosted an Earth Day article yesterday, and I will give you a quote from it. Quote, they called it Earth Day Theology. This is the Washington Post newspaper, and it said, quote, God is judging our sins against the planet, and she is very, very angry about it, unquote. They actually are openly putting God into it, and, that, and yet they're the ones who come after the, you know, the religious right, if you will, and make all sorts of accusations. It's the, it's the left that has turned and transformed into many of these predictions into what you could, could only be described as cult-like. And they're as making the, themselves, they the, exactly, they're making themselves the center of the religion. Now remember Kerry Norgard, uh, the professor who said, treat people who don't believe in it. We have all these other professors saying, treat us, medicate us. They then said, oh, she didn't write that. It was a mistake. They memory hold it. Then we found a university she was at three years ago before they expunged it. And unfortunately, this next report didn't get as much traction as our first that went viral everywhere uh, at Drudge Report and other places. We found one where she wrote a letter to the president saying, oh, get rid of freedom, get rid of democracy. Please don't do what the people want. They're too stupid. And this was a letter by her to him on her website. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so, I mean, obviously she meant, you know, treat us, medicate us. I, I mean, it, the deception of these people and the fact that they're so arrogant. Yeah, and also Department of Homeland Security in a new February uh, 2012 report reiterating its call for the Department of Homeland Security Environmental Justice Units, and they're going to be empowered to oversee regulations.